G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we continue this series where I'm doing individual videos on prospects in the 2024 AFL Draft. If you wanna see other videos that I've done in this series, click in the top right corner of this video. You'll also see that members of this channel will have early access to those videos. So today we're doing a very interesting prospect in Josh Smiley. Now I remember doing a video in December of last year where I had an early look at the 2024 draft and Josh Smiley presented as a real contender for the number one pick, if not the favorite. As it currently stands, he slid a little bit down those rankings but not that far. So today we're going to take a little bit of a look at what makes Josh Smiley such a strong prospect. So like I said, he started the year as one of the top contenders for pick one. And then over the course of the year, particularly around the national championships, he sort of came back to the pack a little bit with a set of performances that weren't terrible. It's just that others sort of rose to his level. He's a very big midfielder at 195 centimeters. And we're going to go through what his pros and cons are. But stylistically, if we had to compare him to a player, I mean, Patrick Cripps is a little bit cliche, but he's one of the only 195 25 centimeter midfielders in the game. So that comparison is apt as is maybe Tom Green from GWS. He started the season really strongly in the Coates Talent League. In the first month, he had three games of over 30 possessions and kicked multiple goals in each of those games. In particular, there was a 34 disposal game against the Lions Academy in the Coates Talent League where he certainly did his pick one chances absolutely no harm by winning plenty of the footy, kicking goals and showing some outside ability and using the ball well too. As for the championships, like I said, it's not as though he was poor, but there is a very even glutter midfielders in this year's draft. So specifically in those four games, he averaged nearly 19 disposals. Half of those were contested, just under seven score involvements and nearly six clearances. He didn't get all Australian selection. And to win six clearances a game, you're still proving that your inside and clearance winning ability is strong. He just didn't accumulate that much of the footy. And one drawback to Josh Smiley is the fact that while he's 195 centimeters, when he's played 40, he hasn't quite shown that ability to be that strong contested aerial threat, which would be extremely handy for a forward who is at least 195 centimeters. He would be a makeshift key forward as well. I don't think Smiley is that type of player. In fact, I do think some of his talents are better suited to playing in the back half rather than the forward half. Smiley did compete in the draft combine as well and ran a 638 2km time trial, which is very solid. And his 20 meter sprint is a tick over three seconds. So that's not terrible either, but it is worth noting he's not a particularly quick or explosive midfielder. He did finish top five in the vertical jump as well. So he has no issue getting his hands in the air by jumping, but he's yet to prove that he's really a threat in the air when playing forward in terms of his contested market. So let's rattle off a few strengths and weaknesses. So in addition to being a powerful inside mid, he's also quite agile for a player of his size. Not explosively quick, like I said, but getting out of trouble and moving laterally is something he does very well. His short range kicking is pretty strong too. He's also got a long penetrating kick without being lethal over 50 meters. He's a very composed player as well as you'd expect from some, one of these top midfield prospects. And like I said, he, he has undeniable stoppage craft, which is a skill that it's very hard to learn after the fact. I think you've either got it or you don't. So he may be a player that is best suited to the midfield. Like I said, though, I could see him playing down back more than forward. Like if he's not an aerial threat, with his hands, perhaps playing off a halfback flank where we know that he has good composure and pretty good foot skills as well. That may be more of a second position for him, although to be honest, long-term, I do see him being a primary midfielder and not playing too many other positions, sort of like a Patrick Cripps. Now, in terms of his weaknesses, I kind of summarized some of them already, but probably the lack of contested marking ability in general forward craft in terms of playing as a second position up forward, not extremely blessed in terms of off the mark speed. And I suppose with a big prospect like this that has such a physical advantage at Cone's talent league and junior level generally, you know, 195 centimeters and he is thick. He does undeniably have an advantage, particularly, you know, in a contested situation at this level. So there's always going to be a question, does that translate at AFL level? Well, I would say if he's 195 centimeters and looking at him, I still think he has the absolute capacity to become one of the biggest midfielders in the game one day. Just genetically, he looks like a beast. So by that logic, you know, maybe he takes a few years where he's playing with the same level of clearance ability at AFL level, but I see no reason why physically, he can't be one of the biggest midfielders in the game. And by that logic, he should have no trouble converting to AFL level. That coupled with the fact that he's got a pretty solid 2km time trial suggests to me that he's going to have no trouble making it AFL level if he can win clearances, has the running capacity to get to multiple contests, I think he'll be fine. So let's talk about his draft range. This is an interesting one. He's no longer really in the mix for pick one. I think that is more or less off the table. As it currently stands, I'm recording this on the 1st of November. So you'd imagine the midfielders such as, you know, Finn O'Sullivan, Sam Lawler, Jagger Smith, and probably Sid Draper as well all go first. Where he probably comes into the mix is Melbourne's pick five. 
which will be pick six on the night after a Le uh, Levi Ashcroft bid. So then St Kilda, presumably on the market for a midfielder, will have the choice between Somali and Langford, I expect at this current point in time. There is a chance they go both, but if they do, do choose Langford, then maybe that drops him down a little bit. But you imagine he doesn't get too much further than, say, Richmond's next pick. There is a connection there to Richmond, so... I think as it currently stands, pick 10 to 11 is probably his real realistic draft range. Of course, this is all being said without the knowledge of what trades are happening. So if those picks do get shuffled around to other clubs, it then comes down very much to need. To be honest, most teams would pick a very high quality midfielder like a Smiley, but hypothetically, if it's North Melbourne, let's say, they could still go Smiley, they may prioritize tall. So those are the little variables here, but at this current point in time, him not going in the top dozen would be a big surprise. That being said, crazy things do happen on draft night. So let me know in the comments what you think about Josh Smiley as a prospect. Would you like your club to draft him? Let me know in the comments who you want to see me do next in this series, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.